And there we are again for game nine of the World Chess Championship 2016. Magnus Carlsen against Sei Kayak and the world champion trailing by half a point in the match. Current standing is four and a half to three and a half in favor of the challenger Kayakin because the world champion lost the last game with the white pieces. And today in game nine, Kayakin playing with white. And the question was, would he maybe be able to increase the score or could the world champion bounce right back we'll find out in a moment let's get into the game so Kayakin starting with e4 returning to what he had done in most of his white games and Carlsen once again going for e5 and we see as we have seen several times in this match a Royal Lopez but this time we're seeing a different line in the previous games Carlsen had gone for bishop e7 here but now he's going for b5 bishop b3 and bishop c5 which is a whole different variation often called the Arkhangelsk variation uh, named after um, a town in russia uh, from which uh, many players from that town played this line but actually during the commentary was a discussion between peter sudler and jan gustafsson if that really is supposed to be the right name anyway it is a different line, it's, it can be quite sharp, but if white knows what he's doing, well, it's rather black who's, who's trying to make the draw than positions arising in which all three results are possible. So let's see what happens. A4, another move is here is C3, but they can often transpose into each other. So A4, Rook B8, now c3 d6 white is playing in the center d4 bishop b6 a takes b5 a takes b5 and knight a3 attacking the pawn on b5 but black is just castling this is all theory we're actually following theory here for a very long time which is kind of unusual in this match we didn't see a lot of deep theoretical battles this one is certainly one of them so knight takes b5, white takes the pawn, and black exerts pressure on the white center, now threatening to take on d4. And here there are several main moves. d5, rook e1 has been tried, bishop e3, a lot of options, but the main move, bishop c2, is what Carlsen uh, Kayakin is going for here. And now Carlsen still in his theory, and his preparation this is all well known takes d4 knight takes knight takes pawn takes bishop takes f3 making use of the fact that white doesn't want to take back with the queen since then black would just regain the pawn would be completely fine so forcing white to take with the g pawn thus opening up the white king position now knight h5 preparing to to enter dark squares here opening up the way for the queen king h1 the king has to sidestep at some point anyway so that makes a lot of sense in some variations white can even use the g file for his rook now queen f6 going after the dark squares and attacking the pawn on d4 still this all has been seen in several games before so we're still following theory here now bishop e3 now cousin played c5 quite possible and the pawn is again to play on the dark squares. And now Kayakin also was still familiar with this move and he played e5. Yeah, white doesn't want to go d5 here because then black plays c4. And you don't want to exchange dark squares, bishop, dark squared bishop here is dark squared bishops. Now I got it. Uh, because for one, you have this weak pawn b2, and for the other, this knight finds a beautiful square on f4. So this is great for black. But e5 is possible. Good move. The point is that after d takes e5, now white wouldn't take back on e5, but take on c5, and then he has these connected pass pawns, and it's just, just amazing for white. So the point here after e5 is queen e6, and now e takes d6, and now not taking on d4, but playing c4 instead. And... <laughs> This is an interesting pawn structure right now. White is two pawns up, but all his pawns are isolated pawns. That means 
they're not protecting each other they're all singled out so very interesting okay well this pawn will fall in a moment but then still white will be a pawn up all right let's see what happens b3 and up to this point both players followed the game from nakamura against cousin chanov and cousin chanov um, probably one of carlson's seconds or maybe even confirmed uh, one of carlson's helpers and cousin chanov played c3 here but carlson's improving on this after c3 why it is certainly better and nakamura went on to win this game against cousin chanov so c takes b3 is a better move bishop takes b3 and queen takes d6 and rook a6 and pretty sure that Kayakin still knew the position up to this point rook a6 is a good move because here black is threatening bishop c7 that would be quite some trouble for white so you cannot allow this battery building up to queen the bishop on the long diagonal so rook a6 is stopping that and here Carlson went for a think which was surprising to Peter Swiedler who said well if you analyze this position you analyze also rook a6 and you wouldn't you would know what to do here but maybe not uh one so carlson played rook fd8 one important point is that rook a8 doesn't work here otherwise it would be desirable to exchange this active rook but white has this little trick bishop takes f7 when rook takes f7 falls due to rook takes a8 and king takes f7 there's queen b3 check and picking up the bishop on b6 so carlson played rook fd8 that makes a lot of sense putting on some more pressure on the pawn on d4 now rook g1 that also makes a lot of sense activating the rook the rook is just well placed on a g file and maybe just a few words about the position in general what is going on after all well white is up a pawn and he has the bishop here so this is good for white on the other hand like i said all his pawns are isolated and his king is also open and can be a target uh, for black he has an intact pawn structure but well against the bishops also sometimes and we'll see this in the game white can have attacking ideas so while it is of course reduced material there's still a lot of potential and it's not completely equal i mean well white is a pawn up after all and even though black has compensation still it is white who's pressing white who, who can try something and that really characterizes this whole variation if white knows his theory it's black who is fighting for a draw but not more more usually all right so let's keep going queen d7 sometimes this idea to bring the queen all the way over here the rook g4 good move stopping queen h3 ideas and also protecting a pawn on d4 knight f6 now the rook has to go to h4 but the rook doesn't mind that much once again like i said stopping queen h3 ideas as well and maybe sometimes white has ideas of his own against the black king queen b5 rook a1 g6 that's a useful move in many lines to make to give the king some space and also to make the black position more solid there rook b1 queen d7 queen d3 knight d5 rook g1 you see how more white pieces are looking are aiming against the black king and now for example the, the knight really shouldn't move here uh, because of rook takes g6 ideas and and such uh, or even here i think queen takes g6 is possible uh, this was a line uh, shown by peter Sweetler in the analysis <laughs> it's kind of nice here a little checkmate <laughs> so the knight really shouldn't move i think i made it clear because then you open up this diagonal but the knight doesn't have to move right now bishop c7 was played now bishop g5 rook e8 and queen c4 to get this knight moving from there but rook b5 is possible that looks like what is this right <laughs> you're putting three pieces in this diagonal but it works and kayakin did not play bishop a4 even though that is possible um he went queen c2 so what's going on here bishop a4 what was carlson's idea well queen f5 is the move with ideas against the white king 
And here white needs to go queen f1. Obviously you cannot take because queen takes f3, rook g2, rook e1 would force white to give up his queen on f1. And black is better. But you could go queen f1 right here. And still there is this skewer. But here black has to move rook b1. What a fancy move. Um, deflecting the white queen. Queen takes, queen takes f3, rook g2. Now currently, currently white is up a rook and also attacking this one, but black has this move knight c3 and he wins the bishop on a4 because the queen has to keep protecting this first rank. And we can look at this position. White is actually up a, up an exchange now and is better uh, objectively, but I think black with his active pieces shouldn't shouldn't be in much trouble here queen on f3 and all the white pieces look awkward so that was a possible line uh, but it's also it looks a little risky i mean if you miss a detail here suddenly maybe black is winning so quite understandably that kayakin didn't go for this and played to move queen c2 of course renewing this threat but now rook e8 and once again, if bishop a4, white black has this move queen f5. Same same story that we just saw. Or am I getting it all wrong here? Let's see, bishop takes b5. I just noticed that uh, there's, of course, the move bishop c1 here still in this position. But probably knight f4 now. Oh, this is all messy, guys. This is all messy. I think here white well, might be winning after all. All right. So let's do this slow again. Let's figure it out together, hopefully. All right, so bishop a4. What is going on here? Hmm. I don't really see another move from queen f5. So, oh. Queen f5 is nonsense anyway. <laughs> this is getting a little bit embarrassing right now. All right, so bishop a4. Well, my best guess then would be that black can sacrifice the exchange and play queen f5 next move going after his pawn now and is having good compensation here. But this is not too convincing. I'll check this and I'll write it in the description. So I'll get back to it later. All right, let's keep going. Kayakin didn't go for this. He played bishop c4. Rook a5 and bishop d2. Rook a4, queen d3. A lot of maneuvering here. But still, the idea is to, to get this knight going from d5. And sometimes they even moves like rook h5 in a position. So now, cosplay rook a1, rook takes, rook takes, and king g2. Oh, hold on. We need to go back because I missed um, something I want to say. <laughs> so rook a8 here, actually. Uh, there was a better move for Carlson. and rook a8 and still white has pressure it keeps pressure but rook b4 was better um just targeting this pawn also going out of the all these ideas with bishop a4 which were troubling me in this analysis um and here yeah there is even the threat of rook takes d4 right now followed by queen h3 so probably white should go bishop e3 but now rook e b8 and uh, this is just a whole different whole much better setup for black all right, so let's keep going with the game. So we were right here. Now, Carlson exchanged a pair of rooks, but still there's pressure, still. And here Carlson played knight e7, which is a, an inaccuracy, I would say. Uh, bishop d8 was another choice. I mean, there are also other moves, but this, this was another move, but still. And all these lines, black never fully equalized. He's close, 
But while it always, of course, being a pawn up keeps some play in the position and can keep trying. But after 97, this was a crucial point in the game. Here, Carlsen didn't have much time. He had about two minutes and Kayak had like 25. And he burned pretty much all his time to calculate his position. He had to make a choice between two moves, which are bishop takes f7, what he actually played, sacrificing a piece, and a move queen b3. And I would like to spend some time here looking at queen b3 because this is just crazy. And in fact, it was the better choice. Um, so obviously, black uh, has this pawn threat on f7 right now, and knight f5 is the most natural move. Queen f5 can be answered by rook e4, and black is in some trouble here. So knight f5, and now the point is bishop takes f7 is still possible, because after queen takes f7, queen takes f7, king takes f7, rook takes h7, this bishop is hanging in the end, and knight g7 doesn't help, because of bishop h6. It might be, in fact, still black's best choice, because here, in this line, black can go knight h4, uh, force the king forward and then take on d4 and I believe black has pretty good drawing chances here even though white is up to pawns can of course try but um, it seems to me from looking at the position that black has good drawing chances but this also move king g7 and this is just really difficult to calculate and I don't blame Kayaki and all that he didn't go for this because here he might also I mean he might miss something and, and be worse who knows putting the rook on h3 is, is kind of artificial but it works it does work now queen e7 just to show you guys some sample lines here bishop g8 going after this pawn and now one thing you need to understand is for example this line which even though I looked at it with the computer it's not simple to understand uh, here, where well, it just takes on c7, here computer is screaming, plus 8, <laughs> white is winning. But <laughs> it's not that easy for a human eye. I mean, here he, he, the computer wants even to play a, a, a funny um, suit, so I move queen d6, but also there are other winning variations here, queen b8. And it's just that the black, black king is so open, and in combination with the rook being loose and black not having a check right now uh, in all these lines, white is winning in some way or the other for example here king of seven king of six now d5 and bishop c3 is there and uh, that wins or another line could be king g7 queen d5 and bishop g5 now and getting the bishop into attack also winning and now white will play bishop f6 soon but this is all very difficult and in this position instead of knight h4 then white definitely wins but it's also move h5 now you have to see d5 uh, with the idea of bishop c3 and black cannot take on d6 uh, g8 because of d6 check all very crazy and for example a possible line here i just want to show you guys some lines bishop c3 of course all found with the computer and and incredibly difficult to calculate over a board. Bishop e5, now d6, opening up this diagonal once again. Queen g5 check, rook g3, now both queens are hanging. <laughs> Knight takes b3, rook takes g5, bishop takes c3, and bishop takes b3, and we get into this endgame where white is up two pawns. And uh, I think this endgame is better for white than the endgame we saw previously with bishop against knight. Here, I think white is pretty close to winning. All right, so let's return all the way back to the game and look at what Kayakin did. So he took an f7 and now you play queen c4 check. And the only move here is king g7 if you play something else. Well, knight d5 obviously runs into rook 6, h7, and queen d5. Then this one is hanging, and um, king f8 or king e8 will be answered by rook takes h7. And a deadly attack. So queen c4 check, king g7, and now d5. That was the idea. And that's what Kayak can calculate. Looks quite dangerous. Bishop c3 check threatening. And all the white pieces are participating in the attack. But Carlson found a good way out here. He played knight f5, bishop c3 check, and king f8. 
king has to go to f8 because if you go here then there's d6 check once again but king f8 now white takes the rook black takes also the rook and we get to this position white is up a pawn but these pawns are well still isolated and uh, doubled and white cannot do anything here he cannot take another pawn because that would lead to an immediate excuse me uh, perpetual king h3 queen f5 so um okay he tried queen f6 in fact he tried for a very long time here but really nothing happened i mean here you could also try to go into a bishop endgame but it's just you have repaired your pawn structure but it doesn't help uh black just puts the king on e6 and nothing is going to happen here just too little material to do anything for white even though it's up a pawn and uh, we can go through the, the remaining moves pretty quickly black always offers the queen trade because that's just always a draw make sure he doesn't blunder a pawn and um, has no difficulties holding this it's actually funny to me that kayakin tried this for so long when he tried the other position which i think yielded more chances the the position with a pawn up in the opposite colored uh, bishop endgame in game seven i believe when he tried that for for less time but oh well he has every right to try and Carlsen also didn't mind because it was quite an easy defense so finally in move 74 the players agreed to a draw that was quite a strong game i would say from both players high quality game it was really not easy to handle i mean you saw me even struggling even though i analyzed this game uh finding the right moves and um, high quality game of course there were some inaccuracies and this critical moment of queen b3 that would have uh, given kayakin better chances would have posed more problems to Carlson. but in the end i think uh, a draw was a was a fair result and um, that means we have three more games to go of course Kayakin is still leading but Carlson still has two white games so he can he's of course can still come back we shall see all right I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis if you would like to be notified for my future analysis future videos feel free to subscribe to my channel and then I'll see you again tomorrow for game 10 it's just going to be more and more intense and exciting and I'm looking forward to it and I hope you as well See you then. Goodbye.